All right, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we are talking about multiplying decimals. This topic can be somewhat tricky, but hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to multiply decimals without any problem at all. So very first thing that I like to do personally, not everybody does it, but I just like doing it just because it makes life a little easier, is I like to determine the sign of my final answer before I do anything at all. So I want to know if my final answer is going to be positive or negative before I do anything. And the easiest way to remember that is the two simple rules for multiplying. If they have the same sign, you will always get a positive result. If they have different signs, you will always get a negative result. So if we take a look at number one, these both are negative. They have the same exact sign. And if they have the same sign, your answer 100% of the time will be positive. So for number one, I know my answer is going to be positive before I do any math whatsoever. All right now that I've determined my sign, the next thing that I want to do is count how many numbers are behind the decimal point. So if we take a look at four and 12 hundredths, there is one, two numbers behind that decimal point, And then there's one number behind our other decimal point. So in total, there are three numbers behind our decimal point. And this three is very, very important because it tells us how many numbers should be behind our decimal point in our final answer. So now that I've counted how many numbers are behind the decimal point, I'm going to start multiplying. And since I've already calculated how many numbers are going to be behind the decimal point in my final answer, I can multiply these numbers together without writing the decimal point or the signs in front of it because I've already calculated for both of those. So let's do 412 times 16. 2 times 6 is going to give us 12, carrier 1. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And 6 times 4 is 24. When you move down to the next line, make sure you add a 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 4 is 4. All right, we're done multiplying. Now let's add these together. Since I'm out of space, I'm just going to add it over on the side here. 2 plus 0 is going to give us 2. 7 plus 2 is going to give us 9. 4 plus 1 gives us 5. And 2 plus 4 is 6. Now the 3 in parentheses tells us there are 3 numbers behind the decimal point in our final answer. So 1 number, 2 numbers, 3 numbers. So I know my decimal point has to go in front of those. And my final answer is 6 and 592 thousandths. And we also know the final answer has to be positive because both of our numbers were both negative. They had the same sign, which gives us a positive result. So we're done with number one. Let's move on to number two. First thing is, let's determine our sign. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. They have different signs, which means we're going to have a negative result for number two. Now we're gonna count how many numbers are behind our decimal points. So one, two, three. So three in parentheses on the side here. And then we're going to multiply like the decimals don't exist in the negative signs. So let's write the one with the most digits up top, 882 times 31. One times two is two, one times eight is eight, and one times eight once again is eight. Add a zero when you move down to the next line. Three times two is six. Three times eight is 24, so carry your two. 3 times 8 is 24 once again, and add your 2 that you carried over, you get 26. Add them up, you get 2 plus 0 is 2. 8 plus 6 is 14, carrier 1. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, carrier 1. 6 plus 1 is 7, 2 plus nothing is 2. That 3 in parentheses tells us 3 numbers behind the decimal point. 1, 2, 3. Decimal point right in front of there. And we know our final answer is negative because we had different signs at the beginning. So here is our final answer for number two, negative 27 and 342 thousandths for number two. All right, moving on to three. Different signs, negative result. One's negative, one's positive. I know my final answer has to be negative. Now we're gonna count how many numbers are behind the decimal point. One, two, three, 
four, five. So five in parentheses this time. I'm going to switch it up a little bit compared to our last two problems. And now let's multiply, like again, the decimals and the negative sign do not exist. So 12,541 times 321. One times one is one. One times four is four. One times five is five. One times two is two. And one times one is one. When you move down to the next line, make sure you add a zero. Two times one is two. Two times four is eight. 2 times 5 is 10, carrier 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and 2 times 1 is 2. And when you move down to a third line, make sure you add two zeros this time around. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12, carrier 1. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16, carrier 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And finally, 3 times 1 is 3. Now let's go about adding these. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is going to give us a 1. 4 plus 2 is 6. 5 plus 8 plus 3 is going to give us 16. Make sure to carry your 1 over. 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5. 6 plus 5 plus 1 is 12. Carry your 1. 7 plus 2 plus 1 is 10. Carry your 1. And finally, 3 plus 1 is 4. The 5 in parentheses tells us 5 numbers behind the decimal point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, five decimal point in front of those five numbers and we know our final answer also has to be negative because our original numbers had different signs so here's what our final answer is for number three and moving on to number four same sign they're both positive so we have a positive result count how many numbers are behind our decimal point one two three so three in parentheses and now let's multiply like the decimals don't exist. Number with the most digits I like to write up top, 398 times 71. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 times 3 is 3. Moving down on the next line, you add a 0. 7 times 8 is 56, so carry your 5. 7 times 9 is 63, plus 5 is 68, carry your 6. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 6 is 27. We'll add them together. We get 8 plus 0 is 8. 9 plus 6 is 15, carrier 1. 8 plus 3 plus 1 is 12, carrier 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. And 2 plus nothing is 2. Three numbers, because we figured that out by counting how many numbers behind the decimal point. So we know it's in front of the 2, 5, and the 8. And our final answer is positive because our original numbers had the same sign. So here's our result for number four. Now, there's four problems that we've done together. There are three problems I want you to try on your own now before you go. So I want to make sure that you're able to do this 100% without an issue. So I encourage you to pause the video here. And I want you to try and solve numbers one, two, and three by yourself. Once you think you have the answers for one, two, and three, come back and play the video and see how you did. Hopefully you go three for three. So at this point, I'm assuming you've paused the video, you've tried out one, two, and three, and now let's go over them together, right? So the first one, same thing as usual, let's determine the sign of our final answer. These numbers are both negative. They have the same exact sign, which means my final answer better be positive. Same sign positive result. After that, let's count how many numbers are behind our decimal points. So one, two, three. And now we can go about multiplying. So we have 1,312 times 42. Two times two is four. Two times one is two. Two times three is six. Two times one is two. Moving down the next line, make sure you add a zero. Four times two is eight. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, make sure you carry a 1, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and now we can go about adding these. So we get 4 plus 0 is 4, 8 plus 2 is 10, make sure you carry a 1, 6 plus 1 plus 4 is 11, carry your 1, 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5, and finally 5 plus nothing is 5. Three numbers behind our decimal point. So our decimal point goes right there. Final answer is positive. So we get 55 and 104 thousandths for number one. Moving on to number two, 
One's positive, one's negative. So different signs means negative result. We have one number behind the decimal point, two numbers, three numbers. So three in parentheses. And now let's multiply like the decimal and the negatives don't exist. So 203 times 135, 203 times 135. Five times three is 15, carrier one. Five times zero is zero, plus one is one. Five times two is 10. Moving down at a zero. Three times three is nine. Three times zero is zero, and three times two is six. Next line, make sure to add two zeros. One times three is three. One times zero is zero, and one times two is two. We'll add them all together, we get five. One plus nine is 10, carrier one. Three plus one is four. Six plus one is seven, and then two plus nothing gives us two. Three numbers behind our decimal point, so it goes in front of the 405. And then make sure that your number is negative because you have different signs. So our final answer, negative 27 and 405 thousands for number two. So hopefully this point so far, you are two for two, and now we got one left. All right. Determine your sign first. They're both positive, so same sign, positive result. There are one, two, three, four numbers behind our decimal point. And now we can go about multiplying. We have... 6,921 times 346. And now we can just multiply these. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12, carrier 1. 6 times 9 is 54, plus 1 is 55, carrier 5. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 5 gives you 41. Moving down the next line, add a 0. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 9 is 36. Make sure to carry your 3. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Next line, add two zeros. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 9 is 27, so make sure to carry your 2. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. And now we can go about adding all these. We get 6. 6, we get 13 plus 3 is 16, carrier 1. 6 plus 6 plus 1 plus 1 gives us 14, so carrier 1 again. 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 4 is 18, plus 1 is 19, carrier 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, and 2 plus nothing gives us 2. We know there's four numbers behind our decimal point, so we know our decimal point goes right there. And our final answer is positive because they had the same sign. So for number three, you get 239 and 4,666 ten thousandths. So hopefully you went three for three in the independent practice. And after watching this video, you are able to successfully multiply decimals together, whether they're positive or negative. And I will see you in the next video. Hopefully it helped you guys out.